Uh, during the uh, next 40 minutes, we will discover, uh, we will make a rapid tour of Couche des Bives. Uh, first, I uh, will introduce me. Uh, so, I'm Benoit Chenot. I uh, founded a new company three years ago named NK Multimedia, the logo on top. I discovered uh, Couche des Bives uh, three years ago when working on a new project. Uh, I needed uh, some new efficient way to store data. And I discovered uh, CouchDB, and since uh, I became uh, one Apache uh, CouchDB developers. Uh, around CouchDB, I also maintain uh, two uh, libraries CouchBeam, which is a library in Erlang that uh, allows you to uh, access to uh, CouchDB, and CouchDB Kite, the same in Python. And I maintain also the CouchDB script, which is um, deployment of uh, Kushep in uh, the embedded KushDB application in KushDB. Uh, so here it is. So why KushDB? Um, first, this is a document-oriented database. That means that uh, you don't store only key value. You, you store documents uh, with the key. Uh, KushDB is HTTP native. We will see what uh, it means. Uh, you can have uh, your data local or on a centralized server. Uh, you can make P2P application with QGB. And uh, it scales. Why it scales? Uh, because uh, of uh, its uh, infrastructure. Uh, QGB is designed is written in Erlang. Uh, so it means uh, that uh, Erlang is, uh, is a language uh, designed to scale. Uh, you pass message uh, between CPU or between machines. This is the same. Uh, QGB has an open file, uh, only file structure. That means that uh, when it says you that the document is saved, uh, it's uh, really saved. It's already not on disk. Uh, crash tolerance because of that, because of Erlang, because of open file structure. Uh, this is HTTP. So. First, uh, what's document oriented? Uh, each, each document, each content in, uh, in KushDB is saved as a JSON document. Uh, you can see uh, in this simple document that uh, you have uh, two members with an underscore. Uh, the ID uh, is uh, the ID, uh, ID, uh, I, uh, the ID of your document. Uh, this is a new Unicode. Uh, by default, this is a UID in KushDB, but uh, it could be uh, the key you want. And you have the REV member. The REV member is uh, the revision of the document, but uh, it's not recommended to use it uh, as a history revision because uh, this is only for internal uh, uh, engine. It allows to KushDB to detect conflicts between uh, documents uh, during replication and uh, other data serialized uh, that you can put in. Uh, so Jacob kaplan Moss, which is uh, one uh, leader of uh, Django project, uh, said KushDB is byte uh, off the web. That means that KushDB is byte with an, uh, an HTTP interface, but uh, it is byte to, uh, to, to create uh, HTTP application too. So, the first thing when you install KushDB and go on the URL, uh, you, you get first, you install KushDB, and the only, f the only mean to know uh, if it's working is to go uh, with your browser or curl to uh, get uh, to know if it works. So you get on the URL of your server, and uh, it's a welcome, and uh, it's fresh and number. So it's first, it's web. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, HTTP is supported everywhere. Uh, if you develop in Java, if you develop in Python, if you develop in Ruby, uh, whatever, each language is, has uh, its own HTTP client. So um, uh, there is a lot of tools and uh, libraries. Uh, when you store a document with, um, with KushDB, uh, you, you do it via HTTP. Uh, in HTTP, you have uh, four verbs, uh, get, put, post, and uh, delete. delete. And each uh, of these ver verbs are used to um, save documents or create database or 
do different action in CruiseDB. For example, to uh, create a database, you just post uh, to the server URL uh, the name of the database in JSON, and uh, your database is created. The same for your documents uh, with put, post, and when you want to delete, you just send a, a delete verb to the server. Uh, now, when you have, uh, once you, are, you have saved your documents on the CushDB, you need to query them. Uh, CushDB is based on MapReduce, which is a patent uh, software uh, concept that was developed by uh, Google. Uh, CushDB used its own implementation of, um, of the MapReduce system. Uh, that means that it's not patented, it's uh, completely free. And uh, it was checked uh, recently by the Apache Foundation. So we use MapReduce to uh, extract information from document. What does it mean? MapReduce is basically uh, you have your document stored in your database. Uh, you do what we call a map. A map uh, will get a list of your document. Uh, this list uh, is composed of two elements. Uh, one is the key. Uh, and the other, the value. So you get one list, and uh, reduce is to uh, uh, is the mean to reduce the key value list in uh, one uh, list of values. Uh, I will see a concrete example just just after. JavaScript is used uh, internally uh, to map uh, documents and reduce them. Each map reduce function is design, is done in uh, JavaScript, and uh, everything is stored in a in a specific document that we call the design doc. Uh, each uh, ID of uh, a design doc starts with uh, underscore design in the work uh, This is somehow like uh, Lotus Note where uh, you have some design document uh, too to make a specific uh, view of uh, your data. Uh, when you want to query um, CushDB, you have to uh, query it on a specific URL on the view. Uh, a view could be a map or a map plus radius. Uh, it's available uh, at such URL. Uh, you will notice that uh, every action uh, on CushDB uh, for views, for CushF, uh, etc., will be uh, de behind the design doc namespace. So, uh, what's MapReduce concretely? Uh, here, here are documents that we store in, um, in, a, CushDB, uh, in a CushDB database. Uh, the example is simple. We want to, um, to organize both on URL by, uh, by people. So, each people can uh, put a, uh, one, uh, minus one, or zero to a new URL. And we want to, uh, to get the top uh, of URL. So we saved uh, this document uh, which is valued uh, in the database. And now we want to map uh, documents. Uh, we want to get all votes uh, in the database. So um, a map is just a JavaScript function where you pass uh, the document as an argument. And here we map the document. We said that uh, a vote is, is uh, a document with an URL and uh, a vote members. And we emit the, we emit the uh, URL as key. This is the first time of the emit function. And uh, the value will be the vote. So we have uh, the result at the bottom. Uh, it works, in fact, like it. Uh, each time you save a document, uh, nothing happens. But when you call your views, the document that you saved uh, since the last time will be passed as argument to the function. And the function will emit values that will be indexed on the disk. So you get uh, a list of results uh, in JSON. Uh, first part of the view are the uh, view information. You have the number of the rows uh, in the views. Uh, offset in case you have, uh, used, uh, you have limited your views. And uh, the result as JSON, you have the ID of document mapped, uh, the key, which is a URL here, and value, which is a what. So uh, we have a list of those in the database. Now we want to reduce them uh, to, get, uh, to get the top. Uh, we want to calculate uh, which value uh, is attributed to uh, an URL. 
So we make a radius. Radius is also a uh, JavaScript function. Uh, we have be passed to, uh, to it the keys that we uh, retrieved uh, before. Uh, keys are UIs and the values. So uh, two list, um, uh, each uh, index uh, is associated. Uh, key zero is uh, the same as value zero. And uh, we just sum uh, all the values for a key. For a key. And then uh, it reduces the previous list here to this list uh, of two keys. So we have MySQL, we uh, have a minus one vote, and QDB that uh, value two. Uh, we can eventually reorder the view to get uh, the results. So it was very easy to uh, to go from here, the list of documents, to uh, our top of your array. Try the same in SQL or some other uh, no SQL uh, system, it, will, it won't be so easy. Uh, so uh, I just show um, the possibility to make views in uh, JavaScript, uh, but uh, by in QGDB, you have also the view server uh, design in your uh, Erlang. So you can eventually make map reduce function in Erlangs. Uh, but if you want, you can add your own view server and make it in Clojure, Scala, Java, Perl, uh, whatever. Uh, since QGDB, uh, uh, as a web server byte in, uh, and uh, everything is uh, just HTTP call. We also made the web admin uh, self hosted. So each HTTP node has an admin, which is a uh, uh, web interf interface uh, done in uh, JavaScript. So in this admin, you could, do, uh, you could create the view, test your views, your map reduce, uh, enter new docs, uh, get the list of docs, uh, make replication. Uh, etc. Deploy. Uh, so one thing that makes uh, QGB different from other databases is the replication. Uh, we see uh, what it is. Uh, replication allows allow us to make easy failover, and uh, we see how it's easy to make a clustering to, uh, of different QGB nodes. So first, replication. Uh, this is uh, an incremental P2P, P2P, P2P replications. That means that uh, when you are, uh, there, there is no slave, there is no master in, uh, in QGDB uh, replication. There is only masters. Uh, when you have a database and you want to replicate with another database, you just uh, say uh, post to the replicate URL of QGDB and say, uh, which is a source, which is a target, and uh, it could work in, uh, in the other sense too. You could eventually make the QGDB uh, talk uh, themselves um, in the same times uh, from source, from target. So you have replication in both sense. Um, uh, rep replication could happen uh, in a continuous fashion. Uh, you could um, make a one-shot replication between two nodes or three nodes, or you could make uh, your replication uh, continue. Uh, this is based on the change, uh, on the change API of um, QGDB. Uh, each, you can get all notifications from a database, uh, the doc creation, doc saves, uh, new design doc, etc., uh, et in real time, uh, and uh, the replication use it. With the replication, and that means that you can take the data with you. Uh, this is very easy to install uh, QGDB on your uh, own laptop. And uh, since the replication uh, is, uh, there is no master, no slave, and uh, each node has uh, its own story, you can just in install your application on your laptop, take your laptop, put the, some data in your QGDB, and when you come back online, just replicate to the centralized server uh, and uh, data will appear on the web service or information system you, you use. So replication is incremental. That means that only new uh, revision of document will be saved. So you could do simple replication between two nodes or even uh, more nodes. You can do the replication in both sense or more or more. 
it works for all. Each time the replication is done, each time the history is updated, and uh, you can uh, you can replicate from A to B to C, uh, whatever the sense you use, it will work. So the replication, uh, an easy failover, you just have to uh, create two machines, two install QDB on two machines, uh, put uh, continuous replication on one machine or the other, depends on which is online, and when a machine uh, fails, uh, the other will have the data in real time. Uh, Failover isn't enough. Uh, obviously, uh, you also need to uh, mirror uh, your data on maybe more nodes, and you want uh, you want to be able to store more than two tier Okay, With um, KushDB database, when you have uh, uh, 500 um, megabytes uh, on your um, gigabytes on your uh, computer, uh, you need uh, obviously one tier uh, terabytes uh, of uh, on your hard disk to store the replication information and to store the battery uh, not compacted. So uh, you may want to use a cluster. Uh, designing a cluster is really easy. You can, you can design your own uh, if you want. Uh, that's what uh, does Mibu. Uh, Mibu buy the, a cluster uh, based on uh, NGNX uh, and um, Twisted, a Python library. Uh, the design in short manner, uh, each data is sharded. Uh, you, you define your shard um, uh, at the beginning, and um, there is no named node or no uh, masters for, for the replication. Uh, they have um, an algorithm that calculates uh, the ID uh, of, um, of your, the position of ID of, uh, in the, of your documents. In the, in the cluster, and, uh, and so if uh, one machine uh, fails, uh, you can still uh, have access to your data. It will, uh, you will just have to put another machine in your, in your chart, and it will recalculate the position of uh, your document. So no master, no, f no, master, no name node. That's not like uh, Hadoop, where you have a, a single pole of failure. Uh, here you have none, except uh, if your machine uh, fails. Uh, this is simple HTTP. This is available uh, not anymore on, uh, on Google Codes, but now on GitHub. So uh, this is uh, with QGB. Uh, we, we just see uh, the map reader system, with, uh, how to deploy uh, your QGB nodes, and now we can do more. Uh, and so. With a, a simple core, a QGDB core, you can get, uh, you can fetch your data, you can query your data, uh, you can uh, replicate your data, but uh, obviously sometimes you want to, uh, to retrieve an HTML from your doc or a PDF or an XML, whatever. So you can take control of, uh, of your data uh, thanks to QSHEPs. So, here is an example. Uh, we take a doc, a uh, list, sorry. Uh, here is a, uh, a view result that we converted in HTML. Uh, how we do this? Uh, we simply create, uh, create a function that will render uh, the results of your view. Uh, oh, that's not a view, yeah, that's a doc. Uh, here, here we have created a show. And the show, uh, the show just do one thing. It take your doc ID uh, if the doc uh, exists. Uh, it will continue the function, and it will, it is rendered uh, in uh, HTML. Uh, you can also decide to render it uh, in uh, XML or uh, JSON or avoid the JSON you want. There is no DB packed. Uh, this is cacheable. Uh, this is just HTTP. You have uh, e-tags sent uh, on with your with your doc in HTTP headers, and so it, you can render in HTML or any formats. The same with result of view. You have view results. Uh, each row here is rendered in HTML uh, via a list. 
list and shows are uh, called uh, in QGB uh, server UI too. List uh, have uh, uh, yet uh, no impact on the uh, database. Uh, they are run with one line at a time, so you can eventually stream the response. This is the same with the view. You can get the results streamed uh, line by line uh, in your application. So uh, you can eventually get uh, more than 10,000 uh, 10, lines uh, in, in one time without uh, taking memory on your application. Uh, and list can be rendered in HTML or in formats. Uh, when you save your documents on the database, you sometimes want to be sure that uh, the user is uh, has the right to uh, update a document, to delete a document, or uh, even uh, you want to make sure that the data uh, is in the format uh, you want. So for that, we have a validation function. Uh, each validate function uh, works on update. Uh, each function is, uh, again, a simple JavaScript function uh, which gets the doc, uh, the user objects, and, uh, and you can uh, forbid uh, uh, return uh, not found. Of, uh, re you can raise uh, HTTP uh, errors to forbid uh, an data document. Uh, so QGDB is provided with a lot of tools. Uh, we have tools to create QShapes, uh, eventually with the show and list uh, and other <coughs> function by scenes. Uh, you can buy it, uh, embedded application, so <coughs> no need to, uh, to Python, no need to Java or anything else. You just install a browser and the QGDB, uh, buy your application, uh, and uh, it will be used by, uh, by the user. Uh, could also imagine uh, auto update of application, uh, improvement of application by uh, by uh, your developer, and just uh, simple replication uh, of it on all uh, your your laptops. Uh, but but when uh, all these functions are, are not in health, uh, you can extend QuickDB uh, via the external. Uh, HTTP handler and diamonds. Uh, what is an external? Uh, oh, French. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, external are a simple script that you add to uh, your configuration file. Uh, they just get a steady, uh, standard input, standard out, put from the system. Uh, in fact, uh, QGDB will send to your, uh, to your script made in Java, Perl, uh, Python, Ruby, whatever, uh, it will send a JSON. Uh, you, you read the JSON and you send it back uh, a string or uh, another JSON to it uh, to make action. So if, so, if you want to, have, to add um, a specific uh, URL to get your image, uh, transform them, uh, uh, resize them and save it, uh, save them at uh, attachment of your document. You create it in Python or Java or whatever. Uh, you, uh, you add uh, this script to your configuration phase with the name of the URL and, uh, and QGDB will send uh, the um, HTTP put or post uh, to your script and send back the response to uh, QGDB. Really easy. This is uh, Sorry. So uh, this, uh, that works so for those who know, uh, like uh, Whisky or Rec uh, in Ruby, uh, which are uh, HTTP gateway uh, to uh, Python uh, for Whisky uh, and uh, Rec uh, objects. And uh, you don't need to, uh, to have to manage how to span uh, processes. Uh, QGDB will span processes for you. It will create one process and uh, it will reuse it if uh, needed. And uh, under demands and notifications, so uh, you can add scripts to your, your QGDB, but you can extend QGDB with your own handler by the in Erlang. Uh, all, uh, all parts of the, um, of the QGDB application uh, are in the configuration file. Uh, so the view is one handler, uh, the show is one another handler, 
list are another loss. Uh, the, the way you see a uh, database is another loss. So if you want to rewrite one handler of QuizDB, uh, rewrite your own system or add ones, uh, like uh, adding full text search, uh, which is possible with QuizDB listen, you can do it. What you handler, add it to QuizDB, and uh, it will be used uh, as any other services uh, in QuizDB. And if you want to do more, uh, obviously, uh, if, you, if you have a possibility to replicate uh, your database so easily, uh, you may want to create a real P2P web ser uh, services. So why not uh, adding uh, Bonjour uh, Zero Conf uh, to, uh, to PushDB? That's possible. Uh, in fact, some uh, do this. You create your script, uh, your daemon in Erlang. Uh, add it in the configuration file in the diamond section, and uh, automatically, uh, QGDB will handle it, uh, will supervise, supervise it uh, in case of failure for you, and uh, it will work uh, easily. You have notification, so you have two ways to have notification via uh, a script uh, that you register in your configuration file, via standard input as a standard output. That works like externals, or via the change uh, HTTP handler I showed before. So some tools were built uh, like this. You have QuizDB listen that allow um, instant uh, full text search in uh, your QuizDB node, or GeoQuiz that allow spatial uh, search uh, in QuizDB. Uh, so, like I said, you can create a standalone QDB application to make, uh, to have uh, local data, uh, make a peer to peer application. Um, so, uh, to do that, uh, I've um, written a script uh, named QShep uh, in Python. Uh, you, um, each QCPP is hosted in, uh, in one design document, but obviously you won't uh, have to uh, tip uh, in your HTTP interface uh, the JS and put the image uh, via HTTP each time, each time you want to create an application. So QCPP is uh, the process. Uh, you just uh, create uh, your structure on the file systems. Uh, there is one directory for views, one directory for shows, one directory for updates. And such, uh, QShep script will generate uh, this structure with uh, generate comments. Uh, then when you finish to design your application and want to test it, you just push to the DB, like a Git or uh, Mercure, whatever. And uh, it will be available uh, on QuizDB uh, instantly. And if you want to replicate a remote QShep, uh, it's possible too, thanks to the cloned comments. The script is available on uh, GitHub. And uh, everyone use actually uh, or uh, recreate it in your own language uh, to create push apps or design doc even. So here are some examples of push apps uh, on top uh, processing uh, an application that takes image uh, and use the processing jQuery uh, library to, to create effects on image. Here is um, an agenda uh, that aims to work like uh, the Google Calendar. It already works. You can add events. And uh, thanks to the change API, uh, you can get um, that in real time in your own uh, browser. Uh, here are an, an example, another example at the bottom that uh, works with Twitter. This is a Twitter client, classic website, uh, Baylog. Uh, an information that is uh, another that is a Reddit like uh, difference with Reddit is that uh, when someone had a, a URL or a comment or a vote, everyone uh, that is connected on information will get the information uh, in real time. Uh, you can eventually do uh, some Twitter like, uh, which is uh, exist. Um, uh, this is called Toast, or you can uh, do. Uh, Presentation application uh, hosted on QuizDB. Each slide uh, is a doc in QuizDB and is rendered uh, via shows and list. Uh, so you could have uh, 
could be a new browser or you could have uh, could be a new desktop too. Uh, recently, Ubuntu, uh, each Ubuntu has could be inside. And uh, a, li a library they, they created could be desktop uh, allows you to to write application using could be on each uh, Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu Byte uh, to the Ubuntu One services. Uh, you can pair your desktop with Ubuntu One services. Uh, on each Ubuntu One, there is a KuchDB. So you can uh, eventually uh, easily replicate uh, data from uh, your KuchDB to Ubuntu One and uh, using another uh, computer and replicate it from Ubuntu One. Such things. Uh, you can uh, even, uh, thanks to Debus, uh, pair free or more computer uh, inside your uh, your network and uh, share data between uh, all the applications in that network. It could be in, in your office, in your favorite OS too, since it's JPL. Uh, Arch Linux already under it. Uh, I think it will go soon in FreeBSD too. Uh, and the uh, future is QGDB on your phone. Uh, some people already ported um, QGDB on the Nokia 9000. Uh, and, uh, and some others have created API and to, uh, to simulate QGDB on uh, via JavaScript uh, on your phone. It's possible on iPhone, it's possible on Android. And uh, thanks to uh, HTML5, you can store uh, locally the data on your browser, on your, telephone, on your phone browser, and replicate to, uh, to QGDB. That's just HTTP. That's it. Uh, future of QGDB, uh, there will be a permission management. Uh, it was uh, recently committed in Trunk. Uh, what is allows is to, um, to authenticate PairDB. You can uh, protect, write, read, uh, and search uh, PairDB, Pair database. Native clustering. Uh, native clustering uh, will be solely used uh, cloud and solution, which is another uh, company that launched uh, their services. This is a giga cluster based on uh, Dynamo concept. Uh, it works like uh, uh, React or uh, Cassandra, the same system of replication, and is based on QGDB. Uh, improvement in QGIS uh, using Common GS, which is uh, a framework for uh, server uh, for JavaScript in server sites. We want to uh, to add it to KuchDB, and uh, more improvement in the HTTP interface. Uh, maybe using web machine. We want to make sure that we uh, that we are fully uh, uh, HTTP native and uh, to send the right message to you, uh, etc. To go further, there is a QGDB website, there is a book which is uh, available freely or on ORI, uh, the QGDB wiki, uh, IRC, QGDB.fr or QGDB uh, on Freenet, and uh, that's it. Question? Sorry? How common you are is that you try to be progressively hating and they claim that at the time you just hate one. And uh, the second one, if it was saying to you that a partial replication of like your website, you just want to replicate certain documents in the database to another one rather than put them all in. I'm not sure to understand the second. Uh, understood well. Uh, well, uh, the replication works in, in both sense. If there is conflict, crossing to. So I don't hear. Sorry. No, uh, we can't yet replicate uh, the. You can't yet filter the replication. Uh, there is in the change API. Uh, there is already a filter, uh, and the replicator uses the change. 
So uh, it's planned uh, not maybe not for the next release, I think, but definitely for the 1.0, which will happen soon. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, there is a revision member. Each document has a revision, which is used for uh, replication. Uh, each node uh, keeps the history uh, pair documents, and uh, when you replicate, uh, uh, each node sends the history. And QDB will try to uh, to find uh, the last. Uh, and if there is a problem, if the um, if the target uh, is one way behind uh, your source, uh, it will just raise conflict and let your application manage uh, the conflict. Yeah, uh, if you keep your, uh, your laptop uh, offline during two months, uh, there is obviously uh, conflicts, but... Uh, uh, this is your application. QGB won't do uh, auto-conflict uh, repair. Thank you.